Yeah, I might tell you some things you don't know about this area. Of course, the bridge has been there, and like some of you said, we used to ride our bicycles up and down it. Um, those old wooden, <laughs> how it clattered when you rode across it. But let me tell you something about bridges, not only this bridge, but why they're important. And Doug Stedman's going to follow me and tell you, tell you more about this specific bridge. But the whole idea, and when I was with the highway department, we spent funds on this bridge. They were going to tear it down. It was going to be gone. Because uh, it got to the point where you really couldn't drive on it. It was dilapidated. But, and Doug will cover this more, this is one of the few examples of these type trusses here. And we spent federal funds to restore and preserve this thing. You know, it was not meant for a tourist attraction or anything else. It was meant to restore and preserve that bridge. But let's talk about bridges, period. When the railroad come through town, in those days, the city didn't have a whole lot of authority on the railroad. They were king of the hill. And the, their, their freight trains would come through here and just stop. They may stop for a half hour, an hour. Well, that pretty well cuts you apart from town. You're, you're severed. So we've got a bridge at Coliseum Drive. And when we worked on Coliseum Drive and wanted to widen the street, we had to lengthen the railroad bridge. So I went to them and you know, asked for, y'all could help fund this to build a new bridge for the railroad? Well, it's unfortunate that you built your road through one of our drainage structures. <laughs> We're not interested in helping you. Okay. Then they didn't. Well, then from Coliseum Drive, you come, the next bridge over the railroad is New Broncos Avenue. Then the next one is Olive Street, which isn't there anymore. That was an old wooden, rickety wooden bridge. Oh, great. Then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great. And then you had the Hay Street Bridge. But then after that, the next one was St. Mary Street. So when you had a freight train going this way and that way, and they stopped, You've cut this hole into town off. If you had a fire out here, or you had an emergency, or you had you know, police or ambulance, you couldn't get here. That's why these bridges are so important, and that's why this bridge was put over here. Um, and again, Doug's gonna tell you a little bit more about this, but it was salvaged somewhere else and brought here. But you know, that's why these bridges were so important. Now, we used to live out of Eastwood, and coming home from work, my wife worked downtown, a lot of times we come across the Hay Street Bridge because all the other places were blocked. So it's important that these bridges are there. Now, yeah, I grew up right here and we used to go on here. But one of the things maybe you didn't know, right back of us is Dignity Park. Do you know that in the 40s they were considering building the Baptist Hospital there? And never could get all the funding, but that's what they were looking at, is building the hospital there. Um, then, of course, now we've got IH-37 and some other roads across here. But still, this end of town has always been nice. I think somewhere down around Houston Street and Hackberry is where the corrals were for the Mexicans when they was fighting the Alamo. They were up here on this hill because you could see the Alamo down there. It's a good observation point. So, you know, I've always liked this end of town. This end of town was a railroad, a lot of railroad people. And, you know, like, of course, you, all, you know where the Fredericks lived, Ed Frederick. Then next to him was his son-in-law, then the Wiedenfelds, then Dr. Holt, and then Miss Dignity. Then when you crossed, Barnett, it was Jesse Lane lived there. He was an engineer for the railroad. Two houses down with J.C. Thomas. He was a conductor. So all this end of town in here was railroad people. This is a railroad town. Uh, and then, of course, you all have heard, of course, about the, the roundhouse when it blew up, steam engine blew up there. That was back in 1912, I think it was. And then um, 
<laughs> I know Hodges was telling me about, and I remember when the train come down and didn't quite make the turn on Austin Street, <laughs> it wound up in the middle of Austin Street. Uh, so, you know, there was a lot of interesting things, and, you know, I've had friends that worked on the railroad that some of them got hurt and all, but um, the bridges was what tied this stuff together. If you didn't have the bridges here, you literally severed the towns. Now I think the city requires that the trains can't stop over so many minutes. Not in those days. The railroad did what they want. So um, it's, just, it's just interesting. And this has always been a good end of town. There's a lot of real nice homes out here. And I don't remember if it's on this street, Hayes or Burnett. There's a concrete house down there. It's Hayes Street. And the guy from Portland Cement lived there. And like I said, there's a lot of beautiful homes that can be restored in this area. But, um, you know, some of the things to keep us kids when we were little, we'd start at this corner of Olive and Nolan <clears throat> on our bicycles. You get three pumps. Okay. <laughs> we could go down Nolan to Pine, down Pine to Dawson. This is coasting now. Coasting now. You only get three pumps to start you. <laughs> this is coasting. So we could go down there, down to Dawson, and down Dawson, sometime almost to the railroad track. Of course, at the end, you're sitting there, you're barely moving. Um, but let me tell you something else <clears throat> on the railroads. For those of you, and of course, I got to tell you, I also went to Fannin and Emerson, but I was before you. <laughs> you're a youngster. <laughs> The other thing, I don't know if any of you remember the, the viaduct on Nolan Street. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you remember that? It, it's like going into a tunnel. But what it was for the streetcars, they had on each side, it, 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 it wasn't very wide. You go down and come out, and coming out, you come out. <clears throat> well, when we were little going to Brackenridge, the buses, and this thing wasn't very wide. It was only like 15 or 16 foot wide. And the buses would go rolling through there. Well, if they started rocking, there's a lot of times the top of the bus would scrape on the wall. <laughs> That's how narrow it was. It was scary. And I remember one time after a rain, my brother and I went down there. It filled up with water. Well, there was a lady there. She stopped and she looked and she says, you think I can get through there? Well, there's a rain a gauge there. Well, it said eight foot. <laughs> We said, yeah, if you can drive through eight foot of water, you can make it. <laughs> so anyhow, they finally fixed the drain. <laughs> they finally fixed the drainage, and now you have a nice wide uh, structure there. But in the old days, that was just like driving through two tunnels. And I tell you something, we did, which don't try this. Us teenagers, when we were driving, we'd close our eyes. Oh, yeah. We were driving, and somebody would tell us. Go right, go, <laughs> go left. <laughs> that wasn't very wise. <laughs> so don't, you know, we, we, don't, do, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> but um, anyhow, this was interesting in the town, and there's a lot of nice people here. And I'm glad to see that a lot of these old homes are being restored. Yeah. So, okay. See, I've got questions I've got to answer. Them. He can tell you. He can tell you. He's going to tell you better. Yeah, I know my father told me about it because he lived just down the hill from Nolan Street, and it knocked him down in the front yard. So it was something else. So okay, yeah, we're going to have somebody talk about that, and then Doug Stedman's going to talk about the bridge specifically. A couple of things besides the Sunset Limited, there was an Argonaut for a long time. And then talking about the, the, the um, Pearl Brewery, they used electric power to bring that little electric engine. And that's what they did, the switching, and it brought it up here to what you're talking about, Hay Street. And that's what they, the brewery sent their, well, they got materials, and I guess they sent beer out also. 
But that's what that little streetcar line was for. It was, it was a privately right. owned line. And then for a while, I know Daddy was working down there with them on the streetcars. One thing I forgot to mention a while ago is that we lost a beautiful historic site here this past year when the church burnt down. I started going to that church in January of 1935. Um, and I got a phone call here at home here when it was on fire and said, the church is on fire. Well, we, we drove down here now. But it had just fabulous stained glass windows in it, just. Holy smoke, was that a pun? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. What was the church called before? Calvary Baptist Church. It was Calvary Baptist. Yeah. And my father did a lot of the maintenance on it. So whenever there was a storm, he and I were in the church, not at our house. Um, and, and I can remember being up. There was a ladder that went up and then on the, in the sanctuary, it was tall, but we had to walk on the, not rafters, but the big cross beams in there. And I, I know, because I was just little then, that if you, <laughs> if you missed, ceiling joists, if you missed the joist, your foot was going to go through, and it's a long way down to the, that was about three stories high. But, but then there was ladders up in those towers, and when, I know I remember times when it was ice and snow, well it plugged the gutters up there, well then water started building up, up on the roof, well you couldn't have that. So I can remember getting up there and sliding down the gutter on ice to go down, and remember you're up way up in the roof, to unclog the ice out of the gutter so that it worked. Uh, now that was a shame to lose that church, but it just, I mean, it happened. But I sure hated to see that happen. Cause it, it just, and, and looking when it burned, just look how they, now you can see how they built it. Mm. And it was, it's amazing. And remember, they did this 1903 or so. Um, and, and I look around at a lot of the stuff, the old buildings and houses around here. We don't build stuff like that anymore. Right. We can't afford to build it like that. Right. Um, you know, and, and I know he was, Doug was talking about uh, the, the bridges, the, the trusses, the different kind of trusses and so on. Of course, now we use, going out. That costs more than the bridge costs to build, just to paint it. So, I mean, you know, a lot of these environmental things are good, but sometimes they get out of hand. Um, you know, and then you run, and I was up in Boston, and they got soft up there that in the winter. And their bridges literally had holes. I could stand and look up there. I said, what do you mean? You've got holes in your bridge deck. Well, that's normal up there, down here. We didn't ever let that happen. But anyhow, I just wanted to mention about the church. That was, I was really sad to see that burn. That was beautiful.